We've been watching the news and I saw that Kevin McCarthy lost his speakership. He's not House Speaker anymore. And I was watching, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really care. <laughs> it didn't affect me in my mind at all. What I got upset about was after he got fired, he gave a 30 minute speech to the press. Why do we need that? <laughs> we all just watched you get fired. Slowly, on national TV. We watched them vote to fire you. Fired, fired, fired. We watched it happen. What could you possibly have to tell us? And I was upset because he shouldn't get that. A 30 minute speech after he's fired. He should not get that. We should get that. <laughs> Think about it. You get fired from your job and then you have 30 minutes for an exit speech to say whatever's on your mind. Imagine you get fired and you work at Taco Bell and now the floor is yours for half an hour. You just walk up. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, he steals, okay? He's a thief. We all know it. Y'all firing at me, but all right, he steals every day, okay? Also, these two that you keep putting on shift together, they fuck in the fridge, all right? I've walked in several times. Everybody, don't eat the chalupa or the crunch wrap. The tortillas are compromised. Every forgotten job should have that thing. You know what I mean? Let's say you, you're a mail worker, UPS, FedEx, post office, and they fire you. Then you get 30 minutes to just let them have it. You walk up and you're like, okay, you're gonna fire me, but all right, all right cool. Just so y'all know, most of the mail is dildos, all right? So if I go, nobody comes, all right? <laughs> Thankless jobs should get it. You're a social worker and they fire you. You get 30 minutes to speak to the public. You just walk out and you're like, all right, you want me to go? I'm gonna go. There's only three of us. <laughs> so good luck. Also, that kid over there, serial killer, all right? Just watch him. Because it's not like he even gave a good speech. McCarthy's speech was horrible. He started his speech, you can look it up, by being like, I didn't get good grades in school. <laughs> Why would you open with that? That's basically that dude walking up and being like, I'm dumb as hell, y'all right, y'all right. I should have never had this shit. I saw another story that, okay, a rich, there was a rich guy that died and um, they were reporting it on the news because he, he died when his little plane went down. That's what the news was calling it, his little plane crash. And, then, and he passed away when his little plane hit the ground and everything. They just kept saying little plane over and over again. And I was like, just say jet. Like, it was a jet, you know what I mean? Like, little plane, that's crazy. Like, I understand why they say little plane. They said little plane so we'd feel bad for him. Because if they say a guy died when his little plane went down, you're like, oh, what a tragedy. If they say a rich guy died on his jet, you're like, good. That's, I'm just saying it, you know? But they just kept saying little plane, and the tone they had was weird. They were just like, died on his little plane with his little dick. Like, it just felt weird. It felt like he, like he was the anchor's ex or something. Like, it just had that ex energy. Like, he died on his little ass plane. <laughs> Little broke ass. It was rented, by the way. He didn't own a plane. It's odd. Just say Jet. It's more respectful to just say Jet. We don't know this man's story. I look at myself. I come from Louisiana, and I don't come from money. If I ever raise my net worth to the point of being able to afford a jet, and I buy a jet, and then I crash land in my jet and I die, and then they're reporting it on the news, and they say Josh died on his little plane, I will come back to life. <laughs> Just a whoop ass, that is crazy. Call it a jet, that's what it is. You know? <laughs> I don't know why I'm so passionate about this. <laughs> I even had a friend be like, no, just because it's a little plane doesn't mean it's a jet. I'm like, it was his plane. Anyone who owns a plane is doing pretty well. <laughs> you know, it's like not like owning a little boat. You can own a canoe and still be poor. <laughs> you know? That just means you have enough wood to stay afloat. But if you are going in the clouds whenever you feel like, that's money. <laughs> a little plane. My favorite story though, my favorite thing that happened was uh, Paris Fashion Week. If y'all aren't familiar, 
Paris had its fashion week and all these people, people high up in the fashion world, rich people, celebrities, they all descended on Paris for a week to see and be seen and stuff. And while they were there, there was an outbreak of bed bugs, which is hilarious. It couldn't be. You gathered all the richest people in the world together in one place and gave them bed bugs? Are we sure this wasn't an activist? You sure this wasn't Greta Thunberg trying new things? You know what I mean? Just her sitting there like, you take a jet, you pay the price. You know, could have been, we don't know. But it was amazing. They gave all those rich people bed bugs. It made me laugh so hard because it's fashion week. So half of them dressed like bed bugs to begin with. So like, bed bugs probably thought it was mating season. You know what I mean? They were seeing them walk by like, okay, come through thickness. I'm gonna take a bite of you later. But no, people from Fashion Week spoke to the press and the public. People from the local government spoke to the press and the public and everything. And mostly everyone was trying to maintain a sense of calm the entire time, right? We're very sorry that this is happening. This is now a reflection on our beautiful city. Uh, we're doing our best to move people. Just please stick with us, right? But there was one person that was my favorite. Um, the deputy mayor also spoke to the public and the press. But when the deputy mayor came out, he was like, um, it's an outbreak. <laughs> no one is safe. What kind of leader says no one is safe? We just came out of a global pandemic where no country's leader said no one is safe, even when no one was safe. That's crazy. Then the mayor, because the mayor came out, she was ready. She was like prim proper. She made me feel reassured. I wasn't even in Paris, right? And then she got this assisted ass mayor behind her. No one is safe. She's probably like, get him out of here. It's crazy, no one is safe. Every leader I've ever had has tried to maintain a sense of calm in a crisis. I remember when I was in middle school, in English class, and English class was after lunch, and I'd seen this kid at lunch, and he had a nasty ass lunch. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I saw it, I was like, he gonna be sick. That is disgusting. And so then I sat as far away from him as I could, corner, corner of the classroom. And then middle of class, sure enough, his stomach started bubbling. And we all hear it. He just over here taking notes like, <laughs> looking at us like, y'all don't hear me, right? <laughs> it's like, of course we hear you. <laughs> his stomach is loud as hell. And then in the middle class, he jumps up and runs out. And on the way to running out, because he was very sick, he threw up on the back of like seven kids' heads. <laughs> And our teacher said, calm down. I know y'all just got thrown up on. Let me get some towels, it's gonna be fine. She didn't say, no one is safe. You see what I mean? I worked at an Italian restaurant that burned down, right? It burned down and even as the head chef was trying to put the flames out on his back, no one yelled, no one is safe. We just tried to put this man out. Actually, one of my favorite things about when that happened was, okay, so the chef is on fire, right? Like, and then the line cook ran out to the dining hall where everybody else was and then just yelled to the whole dining hall, we on fire, motherfuckers. <laughs> Which is like as informative as it is unhelpful. Like, he's telling them the details, but not enough to get them moving. Also, we are not on fire, just he is on fire. Some of the building is on fire, but mostly as we, it's just him. He on fire by himself, right? And so no one knows what to do, because even if someone ran in now, it's like, we on fire, motherfuckers. You wouldn't immediately jump up and run. They looked at him and they were like, so is he on drugs or what? <laughs> And it wasn't until the chef ran out behind him out the door with a couple flames still on his back that everybody cleared out. He yelled, we on fire, motherfuckers. He didn't yell, no one is safe. <laughs> what would even possess you to put the words to get to the public, no one is safe? <laughs> yeah. Like what I think about, now that I think about it, I think that was that Deputy Mayor low-key admitted he had bed bugs. That's what it was. It had to be, no one is safe. That means I'm not safe. That's, no one is safe. I wish there was video. There's no video of it happening, but the, you can tell that this is the case because anytime one of our leaders has to speak to us, they're calm because it's not their problem. That's what's happening. I grew up in Louisiana. 
Our, our whole state would get slammed by hurricanes, and the governor would come on TV and be like, we're gonna, we're gonna stick in this together, all right? We're all in this together. He's clearly in Massachusetts, by the way. We're all in this together, all right? Y'all just stick with me, we're gonna get through this. You know what I mean? I think that dude freaked out because it was his problem. It's hard to stay calm when you're in the middle of something, you know? I wish there was video, there's no video. I wish he would just come out, cause you know he yelled it. You know, he was like, no one is safe. It's happened to everybody, including really cool people who don't deserve this. <laughs> God damn, I wish there was a video just to see him be like, it's an outbreak, y'all. We doing our best, but this is bullshit. <laughs> You know, okay, it's, I've been trying to distill this idea for a minute, so just stick with me. It's difficult for all of us. Any, any, any person out here is just trying to do the best they can and try to be as good of a person, as useful of a person as they can. And I think one of the things that, especially like young dudes are running into, is that we don't need men to be men the way that we used to be. There's like this different man that the world needs now that we just don't know. It's like you don't need to be a caveman anymore, you know? And it's difficult because no one has shown exactly what that is and it has been cosigned on. So everybody's going their separate ways with everything. You know? Best example I can give is I, I knew a dude who, he's black, but he's like, third generation suburbs. So he not from the hood at all. <laughs> not at all, right? But his, his girlfriend is, and, and she grew up in the hood, she still lives there. He was over at her place, right? And while they were there that night together, somebody broke in. It was terrifying. It's terrifying to be home for a burglary. That's something you want to come back home and just be like, they got us. <laughs> You never want to be at home during the burglary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so then he, he doesn't even get a chance. He, he's like trying to process all of the stuff that's happening. They hear a window break. They hear somebody with like loud steps coming in through the window and everything. And before he can do anything, his girl just turns around and is like these trifling motherfuckers. Opens her nightstand, pulls out a gun, cocks it, and leaves the room. <laughs> He didn't even get the chance to be like, baby, it's okay, I'll go check it out. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> She's gone, and he can hear her from the room. He can hear her kind of roasting them. Like, just got me, where your broke ass at? I got a gun too, ain't nobody scared. Which is wild, because if, as a man, if you're in bed and then your girl leaves the room to go get the burglar with the gun, you do kind of just pull the sheets up. <laughs> Cause all you can do now is cheer. Just be like, get him, baby. <laughs> Y'all been great. Thank you so much.